One of the medal favorites, Susie Faber Hamilton of the United States. It's Susie Faber Hamilton's last ditch attempt at greatness. She's at the starting line at the women's 1500 in the Sydney Olympics. Sports writer Christine Brennan was there. So now 2000, she's mature, she's been around before, she knows the drill at the Olympic Games, and she is the favorite. At the starting line, I felt the whole entire world was watching me. Everybody in the world. I had just lost my brother the year before to suicide, and I was feeling enormous pressure to win again for my family to take that pain away. And I had just put favor back in my name to honor my brother. Pre-race jitters quickly turned to self-doubt. What is it like to walk out and see that a crowd that big, a stadium that big? It's 120,000 people. They're screaming, they're yelling. You've never heard sound like this ever before. All this pressure, this pressure is yours. You own the moment. Or you don't. When I got to the starting line, I just wanted to vanish. Can this nightmare be over? This is the worst thing in the entire world. And Susie, you're an idiot for not speaking up. I couldn't tell anybody. You couldn't tell them what? I couldn't tell them I don't want to be in this race. The starting gun goes off. Yeah. How does she look? She's up front. The gun went off. I took off. So it's Faber Hamilton in front. Which is not the thing you want to do in an Olympic final. You want to hang back, let somebody else do the work. I thought she had it. I thought that Susie Faber Hamilton was finally going to win her Olympic gold medal. I'm leading the race, which I can't believe, and in total panic, total anxiety panic attack with 200 meters to go. It's like running with cement blocks on your legs. I think you start seeing her form disappear with about 250 to go. And uh, with 200 to go, you can see, you know, you just know what's coming. Mara Bonita goes by Susie Faber Hamilton. Poyetska also moves up. And one after another after another are passing her. And you can just tell it's over. She's not going to be first. She's not going to be second. She's not going to be third. And that dream of having an Olympic medal was gone. And instead of finishing the race like most runners would, I told myself, just fall. Into the home straightaway, and Susie Faber Hamilton has fallen down. Under the pitiless gaze of the television cameras, Susie Faber Hamilton collapses, tumbling onto the red turf. I was just worried about her. Mm -hmm. Did you think she'd been hurt? I just thought she was in pain. She faints as her fellow runners try to help. It is a performance worthy not of Olympic gold, but of Oscar gold. It was all an act. I pretended I was injured, and I remember thinking, again, you're the worst person in the world. Look at what you just did. You blew it. You're an idiot. How long did you keep the story alive that you were injured and not that you deliberately fell? For a long time, a long, long time. What was waiting for her at that finish line in Sydney, should she Cross first. The TV shows, the the parade, the commercials. The cereal box covers. Yes. Oh, Wheaties, you name it. It was all there for her, and she cannot get there. For every athlete who wins an Olympic medal, there's an athlete that's put on the discard pile who we never hear from again. Susie returns to Wisconsin. Beaten and ashamed, she is a runner turned recluse. Did you feel humiliated? Yes, I was so embarrassed. I didn't want anybody to see me. I had a hat on. I couldn't even go to my grocery store for, gosh, it took me weeks before I could leave the house. Susie begins to slide into depression, and as years go by, husband and wife try to embrace a lower profile in America's heartland. It is a daily struggle. Susie, the one-time cover girl, is now reduced to a single image on the couple's website for their local real estate business. It is a job she dreads, and the stress from it strains the marriage. Although there is joy in the family when Susie gets pregnant and gives birth to daughter Kylie. So I was just so thrilled to be a mother. Besides getting married, this was the best moment of my life. But even motherhood is not enough to keep Susie from sliding into a deep, dark place. It got unhealthy pretty quickly, where she had to hold Kylie all the time. She couldn't let her go. She couldn't go out of the house. She'd become really irritable. What did it look like? Ugly. It was just anger. 
I saw anger for the first time in her, and I saw her withdrawn, and that's not her. Outside the home, Susie's trademark smile is evident at speaking engagements Good job. Good and good appearances job. at local yes. sports camps, but once again, it is all an act. Mark insists his wife get medical help, and after some trial and error with various antidepressants, Susie believes she's found one that works, Zoloft. It did not take long for Zoloft to make me feel really good. And not just good, really good. I'm talking amazingly good. What were you doing that was out of character? I was so outgoing, like over the top outgoing. But things continue to go downhill on the home front. When Mark and Susie aren't fighting, they simply aren't speaking. Had the two of you lost your spark, your attraction oh, yeah. for each other? Yeah, I was not very attracted to my wife, and I know she felt the same. So we needed a spark to, to the relationship. Susie suggests a trip to Las Vegas for the couple's 20th wedding anniversary, but she has something more in mind than slot machines in the Celine Dion show. First, a day of skydiving. I had no desire to jump out of an airplane. But the new and improved Susie is surprisingly game. The moment I fell out of that airplane, I felt like, this is my element. Number two on Susie's list is less exotic and more erotic. A threesome with a female escort. So we decided, well, why don't we try a threesome? A threesome? Yeah, it was something we had talked about. Uh, forgive me, but that's not on most people's bucket list. It was more me than him. It caught me off guard. Was any part of you shocked? Absolutely, absolutely. Two things I, I never thought we would do, you know, quite frankly. At this point, Mark is willing to try anything to fix the marriage and agrees to the night of taboo. So you're in the hotel room, and there's a knock on the door. Yeah. What's going through your mind? I'm scared to death. Really? Yeah, just nervous as all get up. She comes in, you know, looks like the girl next door. And it was a fun, great experience. You had only in your whole life sexually been with your husband. Absolutely. What was it like to have this other woman and this hour in bed with the three of you? I kind of felt like, why isn't everybody else doing this? Why isn't everybody living life to the fullest? The couple pays a hefty sum to live one night to the fullest and eventually returns to Wisconsin. Mark thinks it was just a one-time experience and is happy to return home. But Susie is hooked. She's glimpsed a whole new world of sex, money, and freedom. And for her, the risky business is just beginning. That one sexual experience launched you to another stratosphere. Right. Why shouldn't I get paid for sex? This would be fun. 